We go through about 20 million barrels of oil a day. Every single drop of oil has about one to five to even more, sometimes 40 weight percent of sulfur in that particular crude oil. It's made in such large amounts and has so few uses, it is literally the price of coal. Okay, it's dirt cheap. What are you gonna do with all of that unused sulfur? If you think about all the things that we do with the other chemicals that come from oil refining, that's the world around us. Asphalt, plastics, right, other kinds of chemicals. And that type of development and chemical portfolio has never been done with sulfur. And so our group was really one of the first to think about ways of converting that and directly making that into a plastic. Type structure, acrylate, or whether we can with other kinds of nucleophiles, right? So My name's Jeff Pyun. I am a professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at the University of Arizona, and I also hold a, a joint appointment in the uh, Wyant College of Optical Sciences. Given that, that, that's enough for them to uh, mess around with. The first version of sulfur we work with is in a form of a sulfur called an S8 ring. It doesn't dissolve in anything. It doesn't like anything. It's literally brimstone, okay, the devil's rock. So what we sort of realize is that when you work with sulfur and you heat it up, it has this kind of chemistry that it can do. It can basically break this S8 ring and it can start to react, right, either with itself or with other kinds of chemicals if you can get the chemistry right to mix things that will both be soluble in that phase and also do the right chemistry. So that's chemistry that we call polymer chemistry, uh, specifically polymerization, right? So we developed a new polymerization process. And when people saw the molded objects we could make, they're like, wow, right? This is actually uh, something that could really lead us to a world one day with sulfur plastics a reality. So the very first thing that we did actually is for a battery, if you can imagine that. So most plastics you can't put into a lithium battery. But this one, because the bonds are made of sulfurs, right, you can do a special kind of chemistry known as electrochemistry. Put some electrical juice with some ions and now you can basically break sulfur-sulfur bonds and put two lithiums right where the sulfur bonds were. So that was a special next generation battery known as a lithium sulfur battery. It's got a capacity that's five times higher than that of lithium ion battery. One of the things we did is we made the first sulfur-based polyurethane, so kind of like an elastomer. And also another kind of smaller scale application of sulfur, which is very, very small scale, uh, but very useful is your tires. So we also work with Goodyear and other rubber companies to see if our particular sulfur kinds of plastics could be used to basically make better uh, rubber cross-link tires. You're always limited by your starting materials and what you start with. And so the biggest problem with sulfur, it's colored, right? Versus organic molecules tend to be colorless or limited in color white. So as we now work with these kind of very unusual starting materials, our polymers also have color with them. Certain types of lenses and cameras have really color kind of very specific demands, right? So they have to be perfectly colorless, totally clear, perfectly transparent. But as we now go to other wavelengths, like for night vision, we're totally out of the visible and now color doesn't mean anything. That's kind of the first opportunity we saw. Wow, this would be really a first time ever that we could aim to develop low cost, right? Transparent, processable uh, infrared plastic lenses. So we're just very lucky that right down the street from us, uh, we have one of the best colleges in the world for optical sciences and photonics. And that's kind of where talking to my old friend and colleague, Bob Norwood, uh, to help us understand what these could be used for. So Jeff and I came here almost within a month of each other 20 years ago. And he came into this office one day and he showed me this material, which was orange. And there's a thing about the things that you have in a camera and your eyeglasses that you don't generally like them to be orange. <laughs> This is kind of a problem. <laughs> I mean, unless it's like 1968 you're at Woods, or 1969, you're at Woodstock. But I said, you yeah, know, this is interesting. What, what are these made of? And he told me, he said, oh, well, these might be pretty good for what's called infrared optics. That area of optics has been exclusively the domain of very expensive, fragile, scarce materials. So the idea of a plastic that worked there or a polymer that worked there was, was quite revolutionary. 
I mean, I've been thinking for a while of starting a new company, and this could be the basis of a new company. We've got great support from our technology transfer office here at the U of A, Tech Launch Arizona, and so we can do things that normally people like myself can't do. You know, I'm a professor. It's not really uh, an obvious thing for me to know how to approach companies or file patents or do all of those things that are required to make a technology real. My career has benefited from a number of different collaborations with very good chemists like Dev. And this is my best you know, collaboration, for sure. Best and longest. You know, through a lot of angst and effort and misery and creativity and, you know, we found something. That's the really best part about chemistry, is that there's just arguably infinite combinations of things to explore. The analogy I like to think of is what I call the edge. As you're a researcher, as you're an explorer, you have to confront the edge. And for us, it's very much about being aware of what needs to be discovered, and then having the idea to try it. This drive, right, to make something, right, make something real. Can I, with my team, do groundbreaking science. That's, that's the edge. I think my dream is that the world will have sulfur-based plastics and that I've had a role to play in that.